so tell me we were talking about we were about to get into like uh being able to consume an edible or two and not having to go back to work and have to worry yeah. that you're going to fill a drug test although you can get hammered on a bottle of Jack Daniels show up to work next day and have no consequences for it okay. and destroy yeah. your liver yeah technically well like you would get in trouble if you came and like it was impacting if you're drunk your work. Yeah, if you're drunk but you cannot test that you drank yesterday yeah but if it's not <laughs> impacting your work then it's like all right cool right no i'm, I'm saying it but like i'm while they're limiting like edible use they're allowing abnormal and obnoxious use of alcohol yeah. right it's, yeah it's crazy and it also it does detract from work because then it since alcohol is addictive like alcohol is more damaging yes and yes in general like personally there's downsides have, to both like everything you know i'll be honest i have never tried anything weed related ever and most of it has been because it's like i just i goody two she's not wanting to break the law kind of thing even though I dude i know i grew up as a i was a student athlete all my life dude up until pff, second year of college yeah and then i was like never yeah, never that and then until you know you, yeah, you co- open up college, to the world college things happen you learn um, the world is different than they told you when you're little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and that's I think this is just a personal view. I feel like the closer we can get to the thing that we're telling our kids uh the closer that thing that we're telling our kids about the world, the closer it can be to the actual world, the better off your kids will be. Yeah, I I that's a very valuable point. Don't paint a picture for them. That's well, but the, that's not accurate. But that's the problem. Most people thought, and we're about to go back to government. I hate it because I know it. Most people saw weed as a bad thing and psychedelics as well because of the because of the drug act because of the uh, I don't remember what it was. I think it was Nixon, right? It was propaganda. And they it was, no the... or Reagan. Which one? Who was it? I don't remember who passed it. Yeah, but I forget the exactly war on drugs. It was. Yeah, it was the war on drugs. I'm pretty sure it was Nixon, and it was they they made. Bro, they made a drug that allows you to just whatever, relax, calm down, ease pain, uh, decrease it anxiety. Mostly, if, if we can get a little like this isn't super technical, but it was less a war on drugs and more war on Mexicans. Well, like, that or weed and specifically was a war on. You could Latin argue a America. lot because the crack. I think I I also personally think it was the crack epidemic was what it w- wasn't it targeting African American communities? Yeah. Right. I think there's many you can argue that this war on drugs honestly attacked so many different things including and the lesser talked part the the hippie so-called hippie movement which was the like enlightenment movement another enlightenment movement right we could have argued. Yeah. It was just about a bunch of people taking acid and and shrooms and smoking yeah. pot and then realizing that hey we shouldn't send people to war and hey we shouldn't do that and then they're like oh fuck people are taking these drugs and starting to talk shit that we don't like we're gonna make psychedelics a number a uh, 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 schedule one yeah. drug they're putting it as the same height as heroin yeah which by the way is legal and they're selling it through pharmaceuticals yeah yeah it's- what the fuck are we talking about yeah, it's there's a lot of. Well, how was it the war on Mexicans though? Because I want to learn about that, uh, and I'm sorry to have stopped there, you. I, no, I want to learn, you know. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what you were saying makes a lot of sense, and you're totally cool to interject at that point. Um, from my understanding, and I, I forget exactly what it was that I watched. It, there was a documentary, and also a discussion on a podcast I may. Oh, well, I think it was a discussion on a podcast that pointed me to a documentary. It's video. Um, but a bit, basically through the pop- propaganda, they yeah. would attach the drugs to Mexico. Like me- they would attach it to people of Latin American descent. Right. Well, so, that's where most of the weed was coming from. Yeah. So, and then it was basically attaching things that yeah. they didn't control and that, uh, even there are people within their own societies people that the what they're doing is bad was, weed is yeah. bad weed and yeah. cocaine was the same thing for everybody at that point because that's what was coming yeah in. and i forget it, there was a, there was another reason there was another reason why they uh that a lot of people have said that was behind 
the the war on drugs, right? Um, specifically yeah. on weed being illegal across the country. There was another reason I can't remember it. I got to go back and educate myself a little bit more. The ones that I know that I'm aware of and the ones that make sense the most to me is one, they the pharmaceutical companies. So the yeah. amount of stuff, and I'm not saying like, okay, you smoke weed and all your fucking health problems are solved. No, that's not how it works. It's, dude, when you're in pain and you're recovering from, a, a, I don't know, kidney stone, let's say, and instead of taking the opioids that they give you, you can recur to um, edibles or smoking or whatever you want, which is, yes, it's not as potent as a, I'm not telling you if you broke your fucking spine or some shit like that, change that. No, but for the yeah. common injury you don't need to prescribe fucking opioids and get people addicted how many fucking yeah. people are addicted to opioids and where's the fucking war on that you know not the government the people are doing the war so yeah. you know there's a lot of bad drugs and that we could switch from from the pharmaceutical companies to weed i think what's gonna happen and because they're starting to legalize it everywhere and it's gonna be legal everywhere soon is Pharmaceutical companies are going to start making weed 100%. Pharmaceutical companies have as much have all the money they want. Yeah. They have huge money. Watch, pharmaceutical companies are going to start creating cannabis products because they have hey, the money to invest, they have hey, the money to raise, harvest, grow. They're just going to join the competition. They're not going to lose. Gonna, I'm going to point this point out. Uh and you may have heard of this before, but one of the biggest debates right now is as weed becomes illegal is how do you make it how do you keep the industry equitable right what do you mean because for example because in some places it's so hard to get permits how do you make sure they're not favoring right buys it's gonna have to be a federal how law you, honestly and that's it's a, a thing that i've seen on a couple of shows come up already it's like all right uh, how do you make it an equitable industry for people that want to just get started in marijuana. $150,000 to start in Illinois or, yeah. or something like that. It's yeah. fucking crazy. And it's exactly. legal. I think it's almost cheaper to start in places that it's not like Illinois and that it's yeah. only legal for, for medical purposes than it is here. You cannot do that. So they're definitely going to have to like drop that. Yeah. And there's a lot of things like that, that, um, there was a discussion with this, uh, an African American founder uh, of a, like a it was a black owned weed dispensary, and they were having okay. a discussion about it, uh, literally about that exact thing. It was like, look, I wanted to do it, but it's like it's so hard to do it that the fact that we're the only black owned marijuana dispensary in whatever state they were in isn't surprising. Yep. And it's like trying to make it equitable so it doesn't turn into another industry that's just perpetuating the wealth gap, that it can be an industry that can maybe serve as somewhat of an equalizer that can bring, that can add, uh, that can add wealth to people that are passionate about it, but didn't have the funds before. Yeah. Um, well, and I also think. Continue to add wealth to the people that already have wealth. That are already making more money. Right. Yeah. But I also think that. That that is a danger, but I think where that can be reduced a little bit is when you look at the whole supply chain and every single job and market that weed is gonna create, and I mean cannabis yeah. is gonna create. Just I, I, when I say weed, it's like street, you know, like cannabis in general, because cannabis includes you know CBD, kratom, it includes a variety yeah. of things. So it's about you know there's gonna have to be people that are gonna be employed to be to work on farms or or like on 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 like weed like uh, on on cannabis farms and there's going to be people who are going to have to be transporting that there's going to be people who have to test it there's going to be a lot of jobs are created along the way and a lot of businesses are going to have to be created along the way like hey we will do like this for the cannabis industry or we will help dispensers do that and then it's going to create a lot of business but like you said when it comes down to it the majority yeah. of the profit in the business is going to have to be you know an opportunity that everyone can get to you know yeah Making sure that all the time, you know, the standard and the quality of it is correct. But it shouldn't be different than starting a fucking energy bar box, yeah. like boxed energy bar. You know, FDA yeah. has to approve it or whatever. And that's hey, it, bro. Like, let's just think about something that's hilarious, but also really fucked up at the same time. If somebody was arrested for marijuana charges five years ago, 
then for a lot of the permits to sell marijuana, they wouldn't qualify. Yep. Which is hilarious because the people, it's yep. like telling the people that have been audio engineers before audio engineering was cool and legal. Yeah. That, All right, now audio engineering is illegal and, uh, uh, but you, you're actually good at audio engineering. So like you're, but we don't need you because you know you did it before. We yeah, you did it before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did it before we it, we said oh it was my okay. God. So like, nah, you, we're gonna let these people do it because they've never done it before. Yeah, I was arguing <laughs> like you cannot reach. Like I was talking about retroactively, like letting people go out of prison. That's more difficult to do. But like not being able to fucking start or apply for a cannabis license because you committed a crime that's not a crime anymore is okay yeah. the basic is if you committed this crime it means you can commit another crime right that's this just justice system yeah. it's work like that but the justice system should also say okay we don't consider this a crime anymore i don't know it, you shouldn't you should be able to do that you know like, i personally feel that if something is not considered a crime anymore it should be expunged from people's records yeah like if somebody was drinking in the 1920s Right. And that was considered a federal crime. Yeah. Like, and they're, like, going to apply for something now. No one's going to be like, oh, well, you know, you drank right. during Prohibition. Like, that's not cool, man. <laughs> it's, the same, it's, it's crazy. It's essentially the same thing. It's just Prohibition was for marijuana was a lot longer. <laughs> I just think that there's both sides to it as well. Like, there's a bunch of people yeah. who love to believe that we can solve everything. And, dude... No, it's like you gotta make it. You cannot like rely on one single thing. But I, at the same point, I said like I know so many people that are like forties, fifties, sixties, and they're like still working. And I know that instead of being able to like relax and come down and sleep or do it because they just want to do it because they can fucking earn it, recreational use. You know, we don't have to yeah. use cannabis just because it's medical use bro if some people want if you want to use it for recreational purposes just like having a good beer or bro, whatever do it I think so i'm seeing so many people doing that the delivery things that have started popping up where there's like soccer moms ordering marijuana on yes <laughs> soccer moms uh and and all and retired people are the two biggest market that are growing right now in, you in the cannabis industry you know reminds me of you ever watch like the old uh you ever watch like mad men yes you know when they're talking about marketing cigarettes or like alcohol to yes. women in that yes. show, how they're like, "Yeah, man, we just gotta get them." Is like it's a thing for them to relax. I feel like now is that for marijuana. Exactly. It's just, <laughs> and it's in, it's cycles. You know, every hundred years or every yeah. some like we just introduce something else. You know, and yeah. this time it's fucking weed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping it's um, I'm hoping it's looking good because if anything, just bro. It, Another crime that's not really a crime. It's a fucking yeah. plant. Like, oh, so one plant I can put in my water and brew and it's tea. Or there's caffeine that makes me fucking like jitter if I drink too much of it. Yeah. But, you know, the weed plant that grows out of... It's a fucking weed. Like, you don't even... like it's It grows by itself. It's a wild... Well, you know, in most majorities of cases, it grows by itself. It's just... um. Again, we were talking about why is it... Why do people still see it like this? And why do people... Yeah. Why are we raised uh, in with a standard that is not what real world is? Because you said I would teach yeah. my kids what you know closest thing to reality is. Well, yeah. because they were our parents and, and whoever it is, they also didn't know because they were also fed some yeah. fucking media. And shit. the other biggest thing is like there are so many people that just stay in their bubble their entire life. Right, now, because it's you know after fucking 60 years of life or 50 years of life why would you change your entire like belief and it's system crazy because now in this current state of the world right there is a greater access to information there is yeah which means two things one and it's gone both ways where one you it's you can have a better picture of the world like so many people before us never had access to like if you right. live in the middle of like i don't know Iowa, there was no way to know what was actually going on in the world for the most part. You just had to wait for yeah. the paper to come out and if hope that there was a reporter that got the information to the person that's running the paper in Iowa. But most of the time it's like local news. Now you can know what's going around like the entire world. You can learn about all of these different thoughts and different perspectives from the entire world of humanity on the internet. The other side is 
you can also just stay deeper in your bubble. So instead of occasionally, like you can live in New York and not see, you live in a completely different world than the person that lives next door to you. Yeah. I Meanwhile, think it's because of an in informational day, like, overload. It's no, it's because one, it can, it, it's addicting to have self verification. Yep. And that's what people profit over. Like that's a lot of the divisive media. They profit over telling people that they're right and that the other side is wrong. And creating a boogie. Right. At the other side, in general, the person like us, we prosper the most by knowing the most about the actual state of the world. Yeah. And there's there's just the combatant between that. And it's literally I, I personally feel that most of the people that stay within their bubble it's out of ignorance, not because of choice. Yeah, in the world of information, most people choose to live in... Not most people. People choose to live in ignorance. Yeah. And, and I, don't, I was no, thinking I that. I personally you know? feel that it's not a choice. I feel like it's literally not knowing better. It's, it's like an weird. unconscious choice. Yeah, I feel I like it's... It, it's almost like your dog pissing on the couch. Like, he doesn't... Like, the first time he does it, he has no idea that it's a bad thing yeah. to do. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I just think people's belief systems and the fact that, hey, you're told that you, you're being told every day what to do. And you, like you said, back then you had to wait for the newspaper to find out what was going on in the world. And you so were you, given if you had to change, space. right. And you're giving empty space for you to adapt that new change, right? Like This is a new thing that we're going to do. And it was also a slower pace, right? It wasn't like, yeah. hey, in 2010, we had an iPod. Now we're about to go to Mars. You know, like it's yeah. it was not like that. It was like slower so people could adapt to change what happened is yeah. the speed of change and the speed of information fucking zoomed we got blown with all this information and some to the people point where, adapted yes yeah, some, some people, people adapted and knew how to filter the information but most people remember when we were talking like years ago when we were realizing that social media was giving us all this news and information like oh information overload was being no. thrown around we've already passed that and people that don't look because they, they, the people only look at one source because they don't want to fucking look at everything because they're being blown with messages all over the place. And all That's that, why. Look at the generation that didn't grow up with social media. They're the people that haven't learned how to, they just don't understand yeah. the downsides of social media. So they don't talk about it. They, don't, they haven't told the kids. But like our generation growing up with social media, a lot of us have learned the downsides of social media. We've learned... Right that it can become a time suck. We've learned that you need to control and research what you're seeing. But the people who... Uh, there's so many people that just never learned that and didn't grow up with something like social media. And all of a sudden, they're they're used to just listening to whatever people were saying at the bar. And like if somebody was there that would check them, there would be somebody there to check them. But you can go on Twitter and just hear like positive responses the entire time. Yeah. Um, and it can get... All of a sudden, all of the systems that they grew up using to get all of their information are void. Or they're being taken out of context. It's going to a different platform and applying the rules from the old one. Which is the kind of the conversation that I have about 